One of the most important things in your footwork is getting the right flow. This is Basic Fitter. We are a badminton brand founded by myself, Lemon Quack, and Morten Frost, the former Old England champion. What we want to do is to create high quality products with a very minimalistic approach. So when you see our products, I'm sure you'll feel like this minimalistic Scandinavian vibe. That's what we believe is missing in badminton. Some common mistakes we see in the badminton footwork is some are getting uh, into the court too fast after they've played a shot or too slow. And that means they have a difficult time in timing their split jump so that they're ready to move towards the next shot. So if you prepare too fast in your split jump after you've played a shot, let's say from the around the head corner and you want to get into the center of the court, if you're getting in too fast, then I'm just standing here and waiting for my opponent to play their shot. And that means like I'm almost grounded on the floor and I don't know how or when to, to do my, my movement towards the shot. So if I get in too fast, I'm just standing and waiting for my opponent and then I have to react based on that and then you just are just missing that split second, which means you are always behind in the rally. So if I get in too fast from my around the head corner, let's say that I go here, play my shot, and then I get into the center and I'm just standing here, then I can't use really the energy that I'm getting from my around the head corner movement towards the next shot. So the perfect timing would be play it here, get in, split jump, and then I move to the next one. As I said, if I get in too fast and I'm just standing here waiting before I, I can react. So it's kind of a stop and go all the way. And it's also like energy saving on core that I get to time my split jump, get in the center, oh, and then I'm ready for the next one. So we have the opposite situation as well, where I get into my center or the split jump too slow. So again, if I use the around head as an example, then I played a shot here and then I'm just getting in too slow and my opponent already playing, but I haven't prepared my, my split jump yet. So, so that's when I get in too slow. And then again, I have to use a lot of energy in moving towards the next shot because my timing is wrong and then I never get on top in that rally. So I just want to touch upon the split jump as well. So the examples that I've given you is of course here at the center, but a split jump actually doesn't necessarily have to be at the center of the court. It can be anywhere depending on, again, the situation, the timing, all this. So let's say I use my forehand corner now, I play a shot, my split jump can easily be here on the court instead of it's always at the center because let's say I play a straight smash from my forehand corner, my split jump can be here because I think my opponent will play a straight one. So I wanna move towards the net. So instead of I move into the center and then to my forehand net, I can just move from here and perhaps straight to the net to perhaps kill the shuttle. So the split jump isn't always at the center, but it's about timing. It can be anywhere on the court. If I have to talk about a player that was extremely good at timing his split jump, it's Lin Dan. If you look at how he plays, perhaps he plays a high clear, and that means he has a bit better time, then it almost seems like he's walking towards the center, and then he does his split jump because it's about timing. So you never saw him play a, a high clear, and then ran into the center, standing here, doing his split jump, and waiting for his opponent to play the shot. He's always playing the shot, waiting, waiting, just before his opponent hits the shot, then he times his split jump. It was extremely energy saving. He could do it forever. And that's also why it looked like he, at some point on the court, was walking because he's trying to time his split jump depending on what shot he played and the timing of his opponent when they reached the shuttle. So the last words on how to get a perfect flow in your badminton footwork is basically watching your opponent when is he or she hitting the shuttle and then you have to time your split jump. Don't get in too fast or too slow. Though I can give you a rule of thumb on what is too fast, what is too slow, but you really need to watch where your opponent is hitting the shuttle. If you liked watching this video and enjoyed it, please press the subscribe button and subscribe to Basic Fetter.